So if we look at the um, different aspects that make up diversity, oftentimes it's mostly uh, people think of uh, gender or maybe race, um, but really we have to look at diversity from a holistic point of view as well. These are different, all these different aspects, um, your perspectives, you know, different kinds of experiences people come in with, um, your thinking style, um, your skills, um, your age, gender, it's all part of that. So why do we need diversity anyway? Because as I said before, it increases creativity. You search for uh, different perspectives and different, um, different ways of thinking of things when you have a di diverse group of people. Um, and it does enhance your decision-making skills, your problem-solving skills. Um, and in fact, we, want, we welcome deliberation. You know, because when you tend to kind of have the same kind of people thinking the same kind of way, um, and we're all just trying to conform, it really doesn't leave much room for innovation and, and creativity. So we really want people coming in with a, uh, a diverse point of view, especially in the cyber world. So going back to women, um, you know, even today, uh, I think the numbers are still between 14% to 20% of women in cyber. It ha really hasn't gone up by a whole lot in the last probably 15 years. So I really started looking at, well, what is stopping women from, from uh, going into cyber? Because I really tried hard when I was recruiting people for my own organization, or I was uh, trying to really encourage others to, um, to to look for diversity. And a lot of times the answers I got um, was, well, yeah, we tried, but there's no women in the, um, in, in, that apply, so we don't really have much of a choice. Um, and that's true. Uh, and I started really looking at, well, why didn't you know, many women apply or any women at all apply? Um, and, it, and, it's, and as I started peeling um, back the layers of the onion, it really came down to, um, school-aged girls. So right from a school age, um, girls are actually treated a little differently than boys, especially in STEM fields. Um, you know, they're not really encouraged to, to go into STEM, and when they do, they tend to drop out at the fourth grade um, because they're not, you know, they, they, they have all of these social, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of experiences that come from their family, from their teacher, from their social circles, and, and even the phenomenon of other girls who are, aren't in STEM are, are uh, either making fun or discouraging their friends who may be in STEM. So I started interviewing a lot of girls, <laughs> um, especially my, at my daughter's um, elementary school. She's nine. And I started asking, um, you know, did kind of a survey, and what I found was there was, first of all, there was a lack of confidence um, and the fear of failure. That was the number one reason why they felt that, you know, the STEM fields is not for me. Um, and number two was they didn't really feel like they had any mentors to look up to because they they would they would look around, they would see what their parents, their parents' friends, or their friends parents um, are doing and they didn't they don't they didn't really they felt like they didn't really have any real good mentors that they wanted to be like um, but then you have all of these and this is the, this is these are the two um, main reasons um, for women as well not just for girls in, at a grade school level it kind of continues up um, even in in the workplace um, but then we have unconscious bias gender bias people um, and what that means is, uh, you know, if, if you don't understand your own biases, you tend to uh, hire people that look like you or sound like you or are like you. Um, so it's important to have these um, training sessions at work to really understand your own bias um, so that you can start taking a step back when you can see that bias or judgment kicking in um, and then really trying to solve that for yourself. Um, harassment at all levels. Again, I have experienced these from a personal standpoint as well. Even at the executive level, it does happen. 
Um, and it does take a lot of confidence to do something about it and to feel that you are right to do something about it, not just uh, take it. Um, you know, rigid work schedules. So a lot of women that I've talked to don't feel like they can have a great career and a family, let alone pursue passions and uh, anything outside of that. Um, and I really want to motivate all women um, and, and inspire them that, yes, you can have it all. Um, it's just a matter of, of strategy, and it's also a matter of building your own confidence and, and, and believing that, that you can. Um, but rigid work schedules you know, definitely don't help in that re regard. So it's, being, it's, it's having the confidence in actually working with your management um, to maybe have flexible schedules or maybe um, you have to go home by a certain time, but then you can get back on later with the possibility. Um, but as organizations, um, also keeping that in mind to to really uh, and, and you know um, uh, look at diversity and what what can we do to to empower women. Um, also, immersion education. So I started this in my organization, where not just for women, but also for um, college staff and high school staff. So what I found was, since we're, you know, there's a there's a lack of cyber resources in the world, and we're all looking for the same kind of thing. We're all looking for experienced personnel um, to come work for us. But the more we do that, the more of a gap there's going to be. So we really have to use this diverse thought um, and, and from uh, think outside of the box. So. I started inviting, um, we have college students and high school students come all the time um, uh, to the NIH and they're basically looking to see if there's any summer opportunities, uh, mostly in the science field. Um, but then I, I also, um, I volunteered to be on a panel or can I just come to these events and talk to students? And I start talking some, to them about what I do um, and I make it fun. You know, it's not something scary that you see in the news. And oftentimes it, 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 it piques their interest and they want to learn more. Um, so I offer um, immersive education types of opportunities. Hey, you can come work for my team. Uh, most of the time it is um, an unpaid special volunteer type of position, but they're happy to take that, um, especially if they're in high school and they want to see if cyber um, might be a path for them. Um, and especially for girls, it's, it's a great opportunity they're, they're more than happy to come um, and work uh, in an unpaid position. Um, and even those that have graduated from college that aren't able to find um, uh, good quality positions in the workplace because everyone's looking for experienced staff. Um, I, I've, I've had, uh, I've had um, uh, you know, graduates come as well. And if I can offer a paid opportunity, I will. And if I can't, they're also willing to take um, unpaid positions just to get that experience and 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 work in a in a live setting. So just cracking the code a little bit on you know male and female or feminine and, and masculine psyche. Um, and the reason I, I have this slide is um, you know not to uh, I'm, I'm in no way a psychology expert here or a expert on on male and feminine, but but it's important to just be aware of some of the um, innate differences because a lot of times that's what causes us to have um, those that friction. Sometimes, if you if you're a female and you're you're having to work with a team of males, or the opposite, if you're a male and you're having to work with a, a team of females, it's important to identify that there are like innate differences between both genders. In fact, it's, it's kind of a miracle that we, we even get along. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, if, when, when we when we're more aware of the differences, it's easier to um, to uh, work with each other. So um, for women, you know, we tend to feel confident when we're a hundred percent done. We're or we we meet a hundred percent of that criteria. Um, we tend to be perfectionists in, in everything that, that we do. And that's really what causes a lot of women not to apply for cyber jobs. Um, you know, we, we feel like, okay, we only met 80% of the criteria and there's 20% that we didn't meet. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna apply because I'm, I'm not 
I'm not qualified versus and from a male standpoint, even if they met just 60%, maybe even 30% of the criteria, they would still apply because, hey, there's a 30 to 60% chance I might get the job. Um, so just keeping that in mind. Um, and what I've done with that is I've, um, I've really paid attention to the women in my organization that I can see potential in. Maybe they're not doing um, anything related to cyber. They might be doing complete, something completely different, like project management or communications um, or something else. But if I see potential in them, like, hey, they really, they're, they're kind of a go-getter. They're, they learn quickly um, and even artistic. Like we really do need that creativity in the cyber field. Um, I actually invite them to come and try, um, you know, working for my team maybe 10 hours a week, um, if, if possible, or five hours a week, just to give it a shot. And most of the times they they didn't know um, the vast array of different things you can do in cyber because all they've known is what they see on TV. And they end up they end up doing more and more, and they end up staying um, on the team, which which has been great. Um, women also have a need to collaborate and work together um, with with other people. They you know, they they don't necessarily look for permission, but they they want to make sure that everyone is okay um, with with what they're doing. This is how you are innately. You might not be like that um, in the workplace sometimes, but innately you're you're looking to make sure that you know um, every, everyone's okay. You know. Uh, it, uh, versus for men, they they kind of just do what they need to do. They're trying to solve the problem. They're not looking for permission on how to solve the problem. Um, they just go and, and do what they need to do. It's kind of like a fix it mentality to and get to the end result. Versus women kind of enjoy the process um, of the journey of, of getting to their destination. It's not just all about just solving the problem. Um, we also tend to, as women, um, especially in our innate feminine nature, um, we tend to, uh, we have a need to really uh, show our emotions. But a lot of times in a male dominated environment, we put on this masculine mask um, and we push down our emotions. We try to be just like the, uh, the males. And it's really, it doesn't really work well for us. That's when, that's actually when women tend to feel more burnt out, when we try to put on this masculine mask. But we don't actually try, it just happens normally just as a defense mechanism, because we don't feel quite safe um, in being our, our genuine, authentic feminine self. So we tend to put on a masculine mask so that we feel like we can relate better to the masculine, but it doesn't, that doesn't, it's not really how it, how it works. So what can we do about enhancing diversity in cyber? So we talked about some of these already. Um, as organizations and as leaders, we, we can really do um, uh, have a great effect in the leadership and in the organization to offer and empower women to take on challenging roles, um, you know, be their support system, see something in them or see their potential and give them opportunities. Um, and also, you know, very important offering implicit bias, um, diversity and harassment training to definitely leadership um, and managers, but also to all staff. Um, ensuring that there's, you know, uh, good training available to all staff, um, not just to the cyber staff. Um, and of course, not, no, you know, not to mention the equal salary for sure, uh, but also looking to offer as much remote telecommuting and flexible options. And in, in this uh, current situation, I think we're all uh, experiencing that. And it's great that if you're in a position or organization that, that's really um, able to give you that remote telecommuting, telecommuting option um, and, and offering wellness um, programs for all of our employees. And that will cover in, in um, the next part of this presentation. But it's really crucial to have all of these in place from an integrative standpoint to, to really um, drive people uh, to the organization uh, for retention and to, to, to have a people-centric approach. Um, and if you are a woman already in the technical or cyber field, um, one thing that uh, I've, I've heard from a lot of people is that they, especially from women that, that are too, that, that um, 
are, aren't quite sure if they want to do cyber or they're a little fearful of it, um, even, or even for the school age girls, they want to see other women. So they want to, they, you know, so I would ask if you're already here as, as a cyber leader or, or um, in the cyber industry, you know, make yourself visible, speak at the conferences, um, and then empower and encourage other women. More often than not, I've noticed that women tend to put other women down. Um, and I've had this happen time and time again, um, where it, there comes to be a time where there's this, this feeling from uh, another woman um, that maybe fear sets in or insecurity set in, and then they start putting some other women um, down. And we really have to, it's time that we, we stop doing that, time that we empower and encourage other, other women to, to rise up. Um, and join, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of women in security groups out there. Um, it's great to join those and really uh, work as a community together to, to cause a ripple effect. And again, starting young, I've noticed that it's, it's a little too hard to change the mindset um, the, the older that you get. It, it can be possible, but it's a little harder. So starting young, like mentoring young girls in colleges, grade schools, um, you know, high schools and teaching them, um, uh, you know, how not to, uh, not to be afraid of failure. It's okay to, to fail at something because you can only get uh, stronger from that. So um, these are just some ways that I thought we could really, if we all um, try to do this together, we can really shorten that cyber, uh, cyber gap in the next few years. <clears throat> my thinking outside of the box. And we've covered some of these already. Um, you know, what are the different talents and mindsets uh, and personalities can we look at, you know, not just in cyber or, or IT. I've even had, um, I've recruited people that were just English majors. That's, that's all they, they had. Because, you know, technical writing and the ability to communicate to me was actually a higher um, priority than just having technical skills. Um, and in fact, if you just had technical skills and you did not have the writing capabilities or speaking capabilities, um, oral or written um, good communication skills, that was, was to me, that was a, um, a, a harder thing to fix than trying to teach someone who was already good in that um, some certain cyber skills that they could still function with. Um, and, and again, looking at um, a diverse um, mix of backgrounds, ages, races, genders, points of view, skills, um, and not being afraid of them ourselves. Um, and again, looking beyond the technical field, um, that I, I do believe that's a strong, um, that's one area that, that the entire cyber community might be uh, might benefit from is looking at cyber from a holistic point of view. It's not just technical job. It, it does involve a lot of soft skills. Um, and we talked about immersive, uh, immersion education. Um, and uh, the last uh, on this part is what, 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 how do we attract um, and retain people in, in any job, but especially in cyber? Um, it, you know, money isn't everything. It's important um, and it does get us um, to a certain place, but it's not everything. And when I started um, asking a lot of the millennials, um, most of them didn't say that they're looking for the highest paying job. What they said was they're looking for um, a good person to work for that they can learn from as a mentor. So not just the boss, but someone um, who's a good leader, um, uh, who can really train them and, and look out for them and, and support them. Someone who can really walk their talk, not just say something and do, do the opposite. 